The trawlers are only supposed to fish in waters more than 30 meters deep. But at night, I watch them come into shallower waters. Over the past 10 years, I have seen my catches decline. I sell the fish my husband catches. Some days there are none at all. The cyanide divers are polluting the water and destroying all the tiny fish. But how can you stop them? They're earning more than university professors here. Vessels flying a foreign flag have been fishing for green halibut in the North Atlantic. Unregulated fishing like this could shut us down. The fish are getting smaller. We have to catch twice as much for the same amount of weight. Ten years after the Code of Conduct for Responsible Fisheries was agreed, illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing is increasing at an unprecedented rate. Some 170 FAO countries endorsed the code, partly to stop over-exploitation of fish stocks. But now it seems illegal catches of some high-value species are far in excess of legal levels. In some fisheries in the developed world, this could mean hundreds of thousands of tons of fish. Illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing, known in the business as IUU fishing, has a devastating effect on traditional fishing communities, often depriving them of food and their livelihoods. I have to go out further each day to find fish, but I'm catching less and those that I catch are too small. I can't repay my loans. I am frightened they will take away my canoe. IUU fishing also affects buyers and sellers and industrial fishing operations. There were concerns illegal fishing would wipe out the toothfish fishery in Australia. The quota three years ago was 2,800 tonnes. In one year, poachers caught more than eight times that amount. We've tracked about 12 poaching vessels. They've changed flags and names four times in eight months. Last year, their haul was worth 120 million Australian dollars. IUU fishing also has a devastating impact on biodiversity and habitats critical for fish breeding. There are a number of species endangered or depleted as a result of the practice. In the 1980s, cyanide divers caught thousands of giant coral reef fish, the Napoleon wrasse, for restaurant tanks in Hong Kong. Now, although one large specimen can be worth up to 10,000 US dollars, fishermen are reporting poor catches. IUU fishing for sturgeon skyrocketed after the Soviet Union split up. 25 years ago, Kazakhstan harvested 1,100 tons of caviar. In 2003, this had dropped to eight tons. My family has been fishing in the Caspian Sea for a hundred years. These days, we catch so much less sturgeon. If the numbers keep falling, who knows how long we can go on. What is the root cause of IUU fishing? Scientists and the industry agree. It comes down to poverty and the profit motive. Traditional coastal fishermen struggle for survival in a crowded arena. The need to provide for their families drives them to break fishing rules. For many in the developed world, fishing isn't a lucrative business. After paying for fuel, bait and other costs, net income is often small or nil. Most fishermen are paid by their share of the catch. If they don't catch anything, their pockets are empty. Add to this strong demand for fish and fish products, and there are powerful incentives for IUU fishing. Fish prices haven't kept up with costs. Quotas are tougher. I have to catch blackfish, that is, break the rules. We've been made to lie, made to cheat. We're not greedy, just desperate. The chances of being caught and penalised are also very low. In one OECD country, it was estimated that a vessel would only be boarded at sea once a year. And even then, there was a very small chance of prosecution. So what's being done to fix the problem? Every country has some form of monitoring, control and surveillance system to regulate fishing activity and help detect infringements. A full MCS system can be costly. In some OECD countries, it's up to 11% of the value of the catch from national waters. A highly developed system 
requires trained personnel to work the equipment and analyze the data. It needs observers, fisheries inspectors, or military personnel to investigate and chase infringements. Today, more than 70 countries use technology called vessel monitoring systems, which can reduce costs and enhance effectiveness of MCS and safety at sea. Fishing craft are fitted with VMS technology that transmits their location to monitoring centers. This gives the authorities information on when and where craft are fishing, the size of their catches, and other data. But for monitoring and control systems to work, there needs to be a national commitment to control their fleets, check landings and records. There needs to be international cooperation in the form of data sharing on persistent offenders and international treaties to aid enforcement on the high seas. I see her, Captain. It's the illegal fishing vessel to starboard, sir. We're 300 miles from base. We've only got fuel remaining for another 50 nautical miles of chase. We can't do a boarding, Captain. The nearest country is only 100 miles away, and it's not a member of the regional fisheries body. There's no fisheries cooperation agreement either. Have you contacted their Coast Guard? Will they let us board? No, sir. Well then, we'll have to let her go. In the past 10 years, members have worked hard to implement the Code of Conduct for Responsible Fisheries, but much more is needed to tackle IUU fishing. Countries must design laws and regulations understood and embraced by the fishing sector and communities and easily complied with. They must find funding for their enforcement. A strong, knowledgeable judiciary must be dedicated to upholding those rules. States must monitor and control their fleets wherever they fish. Lists of legal and delinquent vessels, referred to as black and white lists, should be drawn up and their owners identified. There must be coordinated fisheries management worldwide, stronger fisheries management plans, and greater ratification of international instruments, including the FAO Compliance Agreement. But fishing is a pursuit governed by history and emotions. Many fishers believe that the next catch will make them rich. Individuals may not want to give up their race for the fish. But it's up to governments to ensure that selfish concerns don't triumph over the common good. Reports show that 38 million people work in the fisheries industry worldwide. Many more are dependent upon it. Boat makers, net, line and hook manufacturers, fuel and ice suppliers, sellers. Whole communities, in fact. In 2002, fish provided more than 2.6 billion people with at least 20% of their animal protein needs. The resource deserves a coordinated strategy of protection. States, international agencies, regional fisheries management organizations, and the fishing sector and communities must focus on a common goal for the benefit of all. The defeat of illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing in all fisheries and in all its forms.